All right, guys, everybody asks me, they say, hey, Stoney, what should I expect from a formal obedience program? Well, this is what you should expect. You should expect to end up with a happy, healthy, well-socialized dog that'll come when you call it, be still when you tell it, and it has good manners all the time, okay? Listen, guys, there's uh, way too much complexity in the dog business. I call it, uh, I heard an economist say one time, a complexity tax. Well, there's most definitely a complexity tax that you have to deal with when you go to fooling with dogs. And what I mean by that is you, ha you know, as a family, your time is uh, it's at a premium. You got soccer, you got schoolwork, you got church, you got all kinds of stuff pulling at your time. And if you choose a dog training system that's too complex, what's going to happen is you're not going to keep up with it, okay? And ultimately, the very best dog training is the dog training that you and your family will actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? When I talk about dog training, what I'm thinking is I'm going to give you some tools that allow you to get out, take your dog, and fully integrate it into your real life. Okay, I try not to have you block off sessions and practice every day. I try to give you real life scenario training that allows you to get up in the morning and just let the dog follow you around and understand what's expected as it goes from situation to situation. My goal for you ultimately is not to help you have a dog that does what you tell it. Although that's okay, it's not the best. Ultimately, what's best is a dog that you don't have to tell what to do, okay? If I get up in the morning and we go out, I don't wanna to have to tell the dog not to run off. You know, if I put a leash on the dog, I don't wanna to have to tell him not to pull on the leash. If my grandmother comes over, I don't wanna to have to tell the dog not to knock my grandmother down or one of my three-year-old daughter's friends down, okay? So ultimately, what you need is a dog that you can just integrate into your life and have 100% confidence that he's gonna come when he's called, be still when he's told, and have good manners, okay? Guys, if you'll do that, then you're going to end up with an awesome pet. And there's just a few exercises that you need to get under your belt to make that dream a reality. Okay, so let's take a look at these essential life skills I was talking about and uh, let's go over our basic vocabulary and pay especially close attention to how I speak to the dog. I actually don't end up caring if people come here and they use the same words that I use, but it's just like your mom told you when you were little. It's not exactly what you say so much as it's how you say it. So pay especially close attention to how I say things. Isn't that right, dude? Come on, let's go. Hup. Good boy. Give him a little treat every once in a while. Little jump, little hop. Little jump, little hop. Now, sometimes I need to slow a dog down, so I'm gonna tell him easy. I'm gonna kind of change my voice a little bit. I'm gonna draw out these words easy. Because maybe I'm at an art fair, or maybe I'm at the kid's school, and you know, there's a bunch of stuff that's breakable around. Okay, but then other times I want to get him really excited. Tell him, hop, hop, good boy, get him up, fired up, hop, 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 and then easy. See guys, what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to get this dog to where he understands that in any in any outdoor endeavor that we have it's very likely that there's going to be dogs or children running around and there's going to be alternating periods of excitement and calmness. Excitement and calmness. Because when do I really have trouble with the dog? It's when they're really excited and they can't self-regulate. The same thing happens with kids, you know, right? So we go ahead and whenever we're practicing, I show you how to integrate what are called drive building protocols into your program so that you can help them understand and control their natural desires. Easy. Good boy. Hup. Good. Hup. Good. Easy. Hup. Good boy. So let's go back over our vocabulary. Hup for negotiating obstacle. Easy for when I need him to slow down and be very cognizant of his surroundings. Need him not to knock into stuff. Good. <clears throat> How to be more excited. Good boy. Hup. 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 Good boy, how to be less excited, easy. How to wait, which is a temporary pause, like I'm letting somebody walk in front of me. Okay, easy. <clears throat> Hup. Hup. Good boy. Hup. Good boy. I need to develop trust with him, so I'll get him to go down slides, make him understand. I'm never gonna put him in a situation that he can't succeed in, right? 
all these kind of things that I'm doing, these small challenges, there's, the, the dog ends up being successful, and the more successful the dog is, the more confident he is, the more confident he is, the more compliant he is, because he has faith that you would never put him in a bad situation. I got kids running around, I got other dogs running around, and this dog, he's concentrating on what I'm doing, because he knows that making me happy and doing the right thing, oh, good dog, stay, is ultimately going to lead to good things for him. Isn't that right, dog? Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Come here. You need a dog that'll come to you when you call it, right? Because if you're going to integrate the dog into your lifestyle, you got to know that when you go to the park, when you go to the ball game, the dog's not going to run off. All right, so we got kind of a couple of components to that. The one thing is, the one thing is, now look, this is real life distractions. My daughter has come down the hill unexpectedly, right? So what do I need here? I need to be able to keep these dogs with me. Oh, fine, animals. Good dog. Aren't you a good dog, hello, buddy? Good. So I practice every day, and I show you how to practice every day, just when you're out in your yard, when you're around your house, how to develop good, strong recalls so that you can take off walking and understand that A, your dog's not gonna go too far, and then B, if he does kinda get just, you know, where he's moving a little bit uh, out of the comfortable zone, you can call him back, right? So we're working on two things here. A, don't go too far, dog, and B, if you, if you are somewhere where you need to come back, come back as soon as I call you. Let's watch this Dutch Shepherd here. Look. Oh, what a fine animal. You are such a fine animal. Oh my gosh. Good dog. Oh, hello, Scratch. You are a good dog also. Good boy. See, I can run and let these, let these dogs run and play and I feel confident, you know? Now, as a handler, as you feel more confident, right, the dogs are gonna mind better. Remember, because you're emotionally tied to that dog. So what happens when you come out here is I teach you how to be a calm, confident handler. Go on, dogs. Oh! Fine animals, fine animals, fine animals. You're good dogs. And I'm just walking around getting some practice in here. Oh, you good boy, buddy. And again, remember this dog here, if you watch the other video, you can see when he first got here, he just, he couldn't be out here with the other dogs. He would run over and bite them and attack them, right? And so he would act bad, his mom would get nervous, and then he would be like, mom, why are you so nervous? And he would try to protect his mom. And, you know, it's just a, it's just a, whole, a whole mess. Right, get them out here, get them moving, teach them a basic vocabulary, to give them a good motivational base, start working on some stuff that give them confidence. Oh, fine animals. Fine animals. Oh, you guys are so good. You guys are so good. It takes a couple minutes a day, guys. <laughs>